I'm live on the Boulevard Peninsula of Texas, just to the east of Galveston Island, and we're under a mandatory evacuated area here in the Boulevard Peninsula. This community here of Crystal Beach is largely a ghost town right now, as many people have boarded up and left the community. The reason why people are taking the evacuation so seriously out here in the Boulevard Peninsula is because there's only one road out, and it's a very low road, uh, very close to sea level. Uh, this area is notorious for storm surge flooding, and uh, we had substantial flooding here on Hurricane Ike about 12 years ago. Many of these structures have been built since that time, but there is only one road out that goes through the Winnie, Texas area, a very low bayou right there that is often inundated by flooding. And you can just tell that this is a very storm surge prone zone. Look at how low everything is out here. Uh, very shallow uh, ocean as well, even oil rigs, oil barges out to sea. And when this storm comes in, if it comes in, right at the Boulevard Peninsula or a little bit west, there's likely gonna be a 10 to 15 foot storm surge that comes in here, uh, inundating many of these homes. That's why most of the homes here are built on stilts in the Boulevard Peninsula. Our plan is to head a little bit east early in the morning because we expect a storm surge right at high tide to potentially block the only road in and out of the Boulevard Peninsula. But again, there are mandatory evacuated areas out here. Uh, emergency personnel are not gonna be able to access this zone. And that's why it's that important to heed those evacuation warnings, especially ahead of such a powerful hurricane. Hurricane Laura now is forecast to be a high end category three when it comes in. And it is rapidly intensifying right now. An eye has been trying to form on satellite imagery as it warms and the subsidence is happening in the inside of that inner core. Uh, but we expect it to continue to strengthen overnight on approach and likely becoming very close to the Sabine Pass area between Texas and Louisiana. But here is the view from Boulevard Peninsula looking back to the west toward Galveston Island. And this area here is notorious for intense storm surge. And we are just hoping that that storm passes well to the east of this location. But it certainly does look like there are going to be substantial impacts in the Boulevard Peninsula, Galveston area, all the way through southwest Louisiana. intensification but first we're focused on tropical storm marco and the tornado threat that's going to likely continue through evening the storm prediction center has a five percent tornado probability out here and that stretches uh, from coastal alabama all the way into western florida to southwestern georgia and that's uh, where the greatest tornado potential is going to be the northeastern quadrant of this tropical cyclone and even though it's weakened quite a bit since yesterday there's still a huge amount of wind shear in the northeastern quadrant of this storm and that's why the tornado potential is expected to uh, continue through evening. That tornado watch expires at about midnight tonight uh, for the western Florida all the way into southwestern Georgia. This is 
Spain? Spain. That's the same 16. That's the 20. Hold on tight. Oh. 24 hours away, usually you'll see these hanging up in the coastal areas and the marinas. See if Reed's going to get out there and hold these flags. Here's Mike Tice setting up the Windy Palms project. This is his baby project, lifelong work here, attaching these masts to palm tree, palm tree trunks uh, because they often survive hurricanes. So he's going to get that up about 10 meters and measure wind speed and direction. He is dominating. I'm live right now in Bay St. Louis ahead of Tropical Storm Marco. This is the Windy Palms project here. That's the Herve Hurricane Eyewall Research Vehicle. This is Mike uh, testing out the Windy Palms and this mast goes up over 10 meters. We attach this mast to palm trees. We're getting this ready for uh, Hurricane Laura, uh, but we're also watching water spout threat here across Bay of St. Louis. We do expect as the center of Tropical Storm Marco gets a little bit closer for that convection to increase. There's already been some water spouts indicated by radar to the south of Santa Rosa and to the south of the Destin area. We're soon going to be shifting into water spout mode, but we do expect a two to four foot storm surge to come in through here near the Bay of St. Louis area, likely inundating many of our vehicles. But this is the Windy Palms project here. Mike is setting it up. He's going to uh, have that mass way up high into the air there. Uh, but this is the Windy Palms project, there you can see, setting it up. And this is our plan, is to set up a network of sensors out ahead of these tropical cyclones. We have Tropical Storm Marco today, uh, maximum sustained winds about 50 miles an hour right now, but that low level circulation is tilting up to the mid-level circulation. They're a little bit decoupled, uh, but we still expect potentially dangerous impacts here across coastal Mississippi, even coastal Alabama, where we expect some water spout potential. But we are here in Bay of St. Louis, about to head off to the east toward the Mobile area to intercept some water spouts in the outer bands of Marco. Here is the Team Dominator subsonic sensor, and we're going to be deploying this inside the eye of tropical cyclones that we intercept. We're also trying to measure a signal of water spouts as they approach, so that's why we're watching very closely right now. These outer bands, as they almost got stung by a bee. But here's these uh, individual cells coming in in the outer bands, and these are special marine warnings in purple there uh, that for water spout potential. Each one of these has a couplet on the south side. And so we're over here to the west of Mobile Bay, uh, Bay St. Louis. And we're waiting for this convective line, also waiting for the center of Tropical Storm Marco to approach. The center looks like it's down in this region. There's the new forecast track taking it toward Plaquemine Parish. But this area right here, I believe, has potential to produce water spouts as it moves toward our location. We've also got the rainfall rate sensor here. Uh, this is going to be deployed inside the convection as well. So we've got all kinds of science missions and we are ready to deploy on Tropical Storm Marco and then head west to intercept a more powerful Hurricane Laura to make landfall around Wednesday night, possibly near the Texas-Louisiana border. I am live in the Lake Charles area right now, and this is the inner core of a dying tropical depression, Marco. This came ashore with about 40 mile an hour winds in the southeastern tip of Louisiana. And you can see some small raindrops coming down out here in the inner core of this tropical cyclone. And I've never seen a dying tropical cyclone out ahead of a major hurricane like this that's approaching uh, near the Texas-Louisiana border. Those forecast models are trending a little bit west uh, with time. We've got the Herb out here. Mike's gearing up. We got the herb fixed as well. We're going to be collecting data 
inside uh, these hurricanes and this is going to be an absolutely catastrophic situation in terms of storm surge and the wind right now the national hurricane center is forecasting this to come in as a category three storm but this area in far uh, east texas and southwestern louisiana is incredibly storm surge prone there's a lot of marshland down near the coast as well so a 20 foot storm surge is absolutely going to ravage uh, those areas and that's why you have to take those evacuation orders extremely seriously uh, with this approaching hurricane and uh, that track could still get honed over the next few days uh, but it is coming in on wednesday night that's tomorrow night when it approaches the coastline but anywhere from to the south of houston through houston galveston up into southwestern uh, louisiana definitely need to keep an eye out uh, as this hurricane approaches and the conditions are going to begin to rapidly deteriorate uh, as early as tomorrow afternoon with storm surges increasing well in advance of this very large storm that continues to intensify in the gulf of mexico i do expect an eye to emerge shortly as the convection is wrapping all the way around that inner core but right now we're heading down to galveston island maybe the boulevard peninsula that's where we're going to set up shop, our first home base, and then we're going to adjust with our scientific equipment as that hurricane comes in.